The, all through the ages, the arts have always, whenever there's been a new technology, have seized on that technology. Once that technology is available to them, whether it's a new type of oil or it's a new type of canvas, or, artists have already, always seized upon it. The world opens up in a myriad of interesting ways. I introduce a technology and traditional artwork, and I put the two together in order to create efficiencies and to help artists render their concepts from start to finish. Uh, we employ uh, traditional sculpting, digital sculpting, 3D scanning, 3D machining, 3D printing, um, and a variety of different software in order to uh, produce pieces of artwork. Uh, one week we could be working on a giant Ben Franklin for Philadelphia that'll be cast in bronze. The next week it might be a 14-foot Adidas shoe for uh, the Adidas North American headquarters. What we can work through in an afternoon digitally would have literally required months doing it traditionally. So once we have this into the computer, we're able to, as, as Rob has said, over a short amount of time, establish what Ivan actually looked like, verified by the Irwin family. So we have a verification. So we, we would not move toward bronze or anything else, normally and also in clay without the family. But in this case, we're able to do it on a computer screen. We can ask the Irwin family, is this Ivan? If they say yes, we go. If they say no, we go back to the computer and keep adjusting until we find our beloved Ivan. Um, additive manufacturing is where you build. So what it does is it lays down a layer of powder and then it goes with a binder, an acrylate binder, and does a profile of that layer. So in other mm -hmm. words, uh, this box, uh, the computer will take this nested box and cut it into thousands and thousands of layers. And it'll deal with each layer one at a time. So it'll build one layer, the box will drop, uh, in this case, uh, you know, 150 micron, and then it'll put out another 150 micron layer. A print head will come out and bind that layer to the previous layer, and then the box will drop again. This is a platform of Ivan parts. Um, his head and shoulders are in here. There's some other parts. This is actually half a platform. Uh, you can see it's filled up to about the halfway mark in the platform. So this is approximately 10,000 cubic inches of space that we've utilized on this print job. As you can see, it's, it mostly looks like a bucket of powder, but within this powder are some printed parts. And what we're going to do is we're going to very nicely de-invest these parts out of the material. What we'll probably try to do is uh, remove these parts first and then I think reveal the head as a whole. I feel exhilarated. This is so exciting to see this, and also so exciting to see Earl and Ron how excited they are with this whole project. Here we have Ivan, this is after three years, and there he actually is. happen is this piece right here at which point we're comfortable with the surface on it will be sent to a bronze foundry 
they will need to gate and shell up this piece, uh, which in other words, so they have to create a way for the metal to pour into the bronze. What we're looking at is, is what is going to be the bronze so this material gets burnt out of a mold. So this gets dipped into a ceramic shell material, that material hardens, it gets put into an oven, this material gets burnt out, which leaves a hollow cavity, at which point they will pour liquid metal into that hollow cavity. And then liquid once they bronze. have all of those bronze pieces, they'll then weld all of those pieces together. And this will be happening in your hometown? That's right. At Two yep. Raven. At Two Raven Studio. Yes. You know, this project is, um, is at the front end of a huge change in the process of making art. So uh, this represents kind of the cutting edge of fine art bronze casting, which I'm really happy about. But then on an emotional level, this is Ivan. It's, it's my childhood friend, you know? Um, I mean, he was my introduction to exotic wildlife. And uh, I, I can't tell you when I first met Ivan or how many times um, I had been to the BNI growing up, literally in the thousands. Um, and he meant a lot to me. Uh, and uh, I, I re always remembered Ivan long before this project you know, came along. He was always bouncing around in my thoughts one way or the other. And when Doug came to me a few years ago about this, I was, I was very excited. And to see it make it to this point now is, is awesome. It's a big fist bump. It's rad. I want to do well. a high five. <laughs> yeah, there is a family resemblance. <laughs> Don't make me put the hand on, too. <laughs>